Hello all, this is John from EastCoastArmory.com and I'm here today with a model showcase video for this 135th scale JG SDF Type 74 tank. Unlike the other smaller scale build videos that are found in my video listings in which those builds are built for a private commission, this model here belongs to my personal collection and is not for sale. If anyone is interested in a model built to the same specs, can contact me through the EastCoastArmory.com website, which is info at EastCoastArmory.com for pricing and availability information. First, a quick walk around the model. The model itself started off as this 135th scale vintage Tamiya plastic kit of the Type 74 main battle tank. The kit itself was purchased from a model show vendor about five or six years ago. The model was partially started, however, didn't progress past the suspension. I recently went ahead and grabbed the tank and completed it to the completed state that you see here. As for the Tamiya kit, the kit came out in 1979, which was a few years after the actual adaptation of the Type 74 by the JGSDF. This kit that you see here is the static version. Like all Tamiya tanks of the period, a motorized and two-way wire remote version of the same kit was also released, but with more fancier box arts. This kit here is long since out of production and is actually somewhat rare. I was, I was having a hard time tracking one of these older kids down on eBay and my other sources. The kit itself, however, is still in production and Tamiya still produces it. However, it's not with this box art. The kit that you see now is called the winterized version. Inside, it's the exact same molds as this kit here, with the only addition of a, an extra runner or two with more modernized components in order to build your Type 74 as a more upgraded version. The winterized kit retails for roughly 15 to up to about 32 US dollars. This tank here I actually got for a little less than that and was really a lucky find. As for the quality of the kit itself, despite it being as old as it is, the tooling actually held up pretty well for its age. There are some aftermarket additions that could be added to this model to kick it up to the next level, namely that of some photo etch and workable track links. But other than that, the vehicle itself builds well out of the box. As for the type of vehicle itself, the vehicle is a Type 74 Japanese main battle tank tank itself is the second indigenous post-war Japanese tank design, the first being the Type 61. The Type 74 is still used today by the JGSDF as they've continued to upgrade and modernize the vehicle as new technologies come around. The design itself has some very interesting attributes to it. The real vehicle actually has a adjustable suspension and the vehicle can lower as well as pitch and yaw itself to better accommodate terrain. Also, if we can see, the tank, like the AMX-30, has a very, very squat and low profile due to the shape of its all-cast turret. As for the gun, the vehicle is equipped with the British 105mm gun. It's the same gun found on the M60, as well as other NATO vehicles. As for this model here, this model here is mostly built out of the box, however, it does feature several add-on additions that I made to the vehicle. We'll be going over these upgrades in this video. One unique feature of the Type 74 is that of the tank's searchlight. Unlike most other tanks that feature a barrel 
mantelite mounted searchlight which is typically mounted on top of the gun and then has a short little power cable that enters from the top part of the vehicle. On the Type 74, it's a little bit different. The searchlight's on the side of the main gun and the power cord emerges from the rear and snakes along the entire side of the turret only to enter into the rear bustle. The power cord that you see here is not included with the kit and neither are the little provisions for mounting it. The power cord that you see here was a simple addition. It's made out of just a piece of electrical wire and the straps are made out of thin pieces of brass. Now, on, as of note, on the winterized upgraded version of this kit, the power cord and the provisions are supplied with that model. While we're on the searchlight though, Type 74 is unique in that the searchlight itself has an internal shutter and can block out and protect the bulb from any damage. The shutters themselves are painted black as you see here. Moving our way to the model's exhaust, you'll notice that the exhaust on this vehicle is painted differently than you would find on my other builds. The purpose for that is that if you notice the exhaust itself is not very rusty and is actually silver in color. This is as per the real vehicle. The real Type 70 Fords feature a rust resilient exhaust manifold system. Moving our way to the tank's M2HB heavy machine gun, you'll notice that the handles on the spade grip as well as on the charging handle are not painted with a wood type coloring. On the real Type 74s, the 50 calibers are supplied by FN, and the FN M2s feature polymer and or a black bakelite material for use as the grips on the M2. Moving on to the last and most important modification done to this vehicle. Like I mentioned before, the original vehicle was a static kit. However, this model has actually been converted to be motorized. For the motorization conversion, I went ahead and utilized the twin motor gearbox from Tamiya. These gearboxes are extremely durable and are fantastic for converting 135th scale tanks to motorized. Since the, they do feature a dual motor system, you can actually make the vehicle radio controlled with a little bit of effort. However, for this build, I went ahead and just wired the two motors to feed off of the same battery, so the tank is only motorized. These gearboxes I've used on several motorization conversions and are very highly recommended. One feature that made the motorization conversion very appealing was the fact that since the original Type 74 kit was designed to be motorized, because the original Type 74 was designed to be motorized, the installation of the dual motor gearbox was a very simple conversion compared to having to do this conversion to a vehicle which was never meant to be motorized from the beginning. As for the batteries, the tank uses just two AA batteries and a simple cutoff switch. The switch is designed so that nothing protrudes from the underbelly of the vehicle. In order to turn the vehicle on, you have a toothpick and you simply just trigger the switch from the slot on the original motorized kit. This slot here would have been for a switch would have descended from the bottom of the vehicle. Because I, I went with the low profile system, it's because I didn't want to have any obstructions or any other blisters or any other type of appendages dangling from the bottom of the hull. Another addition that was made to the model to help it perform better was the addition of a steel rod for use of the idler support. The original kit had two plastic inserts which would be glued to the interior portion of the hull in order to mount on the idlers. However, with the rigors of motorizational use, the plastic idler mounts are less than ideal. In its place, a simple steel rod the same dimension of the shafts was added. Now one thing that's unique is that the kit originally was designed to have a metal rod going across for the actual for the same purpose because of which the simple installation of, a rod, of the rod was a drop-in installation and no mods were needed to have been made to either the hull 
or the other wheels. Another benefit of using a made to be motorized starter kit is the way the upper and lower hulls mate. They are designed to come apart with the use of no fasteners and no tools. Also, once assembled, the seams where they meet are very minimal. To connect the two upper and lower halves, you simply put on the snaps in their required locations, to which everything will then click in place. The model is now one piece, it could be set aside for a static shelf display, or it can be taken out for a test drive. Like we just saw, the vehicle is motorized. Now, to turn it on, I have my little screwdriver here, and I'm gonna hit the switch. Now keep in mind, the tank only moves forward and does not have any control over direction and or speed. It's a simple motorized model, so once it goes, it just runs. To turn it on, I simply hit the switch, and the vehicle's running. As you can see with the dual motor gearbox, the tank has a nice speed to it. And that concludes this model showcase video for this 135th scale JGSDF Type 74 tank. If you like this video, stop by and like us on Facebook. And don't forget to check out EastCoastArmory.com for more 135th scale pre-built models, as well as 16 and 116th scale detail components and vehicle builds. Thank you.